Now, we look at the AVNRT, the atrial ventricular nodal reentry tachycardia. The origin is from the AV node, again, it's due to reentry. The rate is usually 150 to 230 beats per minute. It can be faster in teenagers. It's a normal chorus complex or narrow chorus with absence P waves, and most common, this is the most common SVT in adults. It accounts for 60% of the atrial narrow complex taking arrhythmias. Of course, this is excluding the atrial fibrillation. And the circuit is contained within the node itself. So sometimes it regards the micro reentry. And the atria and ventricles are not part of the circuit, but actuated as bystanders only. And premature bits in one chamber will not affect activation in the other. So, this is a dual AV nodal pathway. Usually, in AVNRT, the existence of a dual AV nodal pathway is present. So, this is a fast pathway, and there exists another slow pathway. Here, it depicts some contrasting features between the AVRT and AVNRT. For the AVRT, the rate is usually 180 to 260 beats per minute. For the AVNRT, it's a bit slower. It's 150 to, 100 to 230 beats per minute. But sometimes, um, uh, consistently overlapped is occurring. So AVRT is a narrow class complex, if orthotrombic. For the AVNRT, it's usually or always narrow class. There's a wide class complex if antitrombic tachycardia in AVNRT, in AVRT. And there's a delta wave positive in sinus rhythm with a PR less than 120 milliseconds. And there's a 1-1 one -one conduction during tachycardia. While in AVNRT, there's no delta wave. And the P wave usually buried in the QRS, so you cannot see any P wave in the tachycardia ECG. And conductions one to one or two to one when distal blocks are present. And this must be one man conduction in AVRT.